Hey everyone, I've been working on a new project with an e-paper display. It's a DIY e-reader. It's got an SD card to hold the books so it's quite easy to add new ones and you can hold an awful lot of books on it. There's a simple UI to navigate through the files and we can open a book and read it. I've built mine around a 4.7 inch e-paper display from Lilygo, but you should be able to get the software up and running on any ESP32 based e-paper board provided it has PS RAM built in and a way to connect an SD card. Lots of boards come with an SD card reader, but if yours is missing one, then you can easily connect one using SPI following the instructions in this video. I put a link in the description. You'll also need three buttons for navigating. We need up, down and select. The code is pretty flexible, so these can either be defined as either active low or active high, depending on your board and your wiring. We'll run through how this all works after this quick thanks to PC Way for sponsoring the channel. They've been supporting me for a while now, and they've been really helpful. I've made quite a few boards with them, and the service has always been great. They also do CNC and 3D printing, which we'll be trying out in some future videos. Check out the link in the description. So how does it all work? Well, let's start off with a quick rough overview of the EPUB format. This is a free and open format for ebooks that is compatible with most popular ebook readers. This means there are a lot of free books available that you can download and read. Now, I've only investigated the format sufficiently to get a basic reader up and running, but there is a detailed spec with a lot more information online. If we look at the first few bytes of an EPUB file, we can see that it's actually a zip archive. We can easily change the extension of the file to zip and then decompress it using unzip to see what's inside. The most interesting file is the content OPF file. This XML file contains three sections that are of interest to us. The metadata section contains useful information such as the title of the book, along with the content to use for the cover page image. The manifest contains a list of all the items contained in the EPUB file. And finally, the spine section lists the items in the order they should be displayed to the reader. There is some other useful information, but for a basic e-reader, we can safely ignore it. If we look at the individual items that make up the book, we can see that we have some images and some HTML files. Now, the EPUB specification dictates that the HTML files should all be valid XHTML. This will come in handy later when we try to pass them. So there are several challenges to solve. We need to get some EPUB files onto our device. We need a zip library that will run on the ESP32 and let us read files from the EPUB archive. We need to pass the content OPF file using an XML parser. And finally, we need to take the XHTML items, pass them, and lay them out so they can be rendered on the ePaper display. To make the first part simple, I've attached an SD card to the board. This is a slightly hacked together contraption. There is an official adapter for the Lilygo board, but using what we've learned in the previous video, I've got an SD card attached to some spare GPIO pins. Unfortunately, these are the only spare GPIO pins on the board, so we can't use the touchscreen interface. But this is probably a good thing as buttons mean we can take advantage of deep sleep and save battery power. With a bunch of EPUB files copied onto the SD card, it's pretty straightforward to list the contents using a couple of C functions. We can filter out the EPUB files by checking the extension and ignore any hidden files that start with a dot. Now, there is a nasty gotcha here for the unwary. By default, the file system code in the ESP IDF doesn't support long file names, so you need to enable this option using menu config. If you don't do this, then you'll end up with some very weird and wacky names showing up when you list the directory contents. With the list of EPUB file names collected, we need to open them up and pass the content OPF file. There's a nice library we can use called MiniZ, which will read zip archives. I've encapsulated this in a very simple wrapper that will either extract files to memory or extract them to a file on the SD card. To extract the contents OPF file, we just use these couple of lines. The file we're extracting is generally quite small, so we can extract it to memory without any problems. To pass the XML file, I'm using a library called TinyXML2. This is a nice C++ library that is lightweight and works really nicely on the ESP32. With the XML passed, it's quite simple to extract out the information we need about the book. We can get the title and we can get the item that should be used for the cover image. We use this to drive our book selection UI. To process the manifest and spine, we first read in the items from the manifest and create a map from the ID of the item to the item path in the zip archive. We then run through the spine and collect the items in the required order. So that's our EPUB structure pretty much passed. We now have enough information to show a list of books with a thumbnail and title, 
and for each book we know what order to render the HTML files in. This leads us nicely onto our next problem. We need to pass and render the HTML and CSS files. So doing this properly on an ESP32 would be pretty difficult, even with the extra PS RAM, so we will need to cheat slightly. Electronic books don't really have that much styling, so we can pretty much ignore the CSS files. They're also designed to be displayed on various different devices and screen resolutions, so the structure of the HTML tends to be fairly straightforward. We're really only interested in a few HTML tags. We're looking for headers, divs and paragraph tags. We'll treat these tags as containing blocks of text. We also want to pick up bold and italic tags to get some formatting, and we also want the image tags so we can show the inline images in the book. Since we know that we'll be getting valid XHTML, we can use the tiny XML2 parser on the files. We pass the XML and then we visit each tag in the document, picking up any opening tags that are of interest to us. If we see a new block tag, then we start collecting text, making sure we flag any sections that are bold or italic. We do this until we hit the end of the block tag. If we hit an image tag, then we end the current block, add the image and then create a new block. At the end of this processing, we have a list of text and image blocks in the order they appear in the HTML file. We now need to fit these to the width of our display and calculate the height of each block so we can work out where the page break should be. For images, this is pretty simple. We get the dimensions of the image and then scale them so they fit within the screen bounds. For the text blocks, it's a bit more complicated. We need to lay out the text so it fits nicely within the width of the screen. We need to work out where the line break should be. Now there's a very nice dynamic programming way of doing this that should ensure we end up with nicely laid out text without huge gaps or without really tiny gaps. You can watch a really interesting talk on dynamic programming here that I've linked to in the description that describes the algorithm in detail. With our text blocks broken into individual lines and our image heights all calculated, we can now simply assign the lines of text and images to pages. We start assigning text and images to a page and when we run out of space, we just start a new page. When it comes to rendering the pages, it's now pretty simple. We just draw the images and the words where they've been laid out. All the heavy lifting has already been done, so our rendering is easy. To make the device portable, I've got a battery attached, and the code goes into deep sleep after 30 seconds of user inactivity. I've got a video that dives into deep sleep that's definitely worth watching. All the code is on GitHub, there's definitely huge scope for improving what's there. The project is by no means done, and still needs a considerable amount of work, so please contribute. If you've got an ESP32 and an e-paper display, then let me know if you get it to work. I'm really excited to see what can be done. Good luck.